The Dark is Lost Medium, Volume 2. I don't remember Volume 1. Okay, I was, um... Alright. Alright, bet. The topics discussed in this video are disturbing and contain fictional reenactments of scenes which depict real events. This video contains flashing lights. Kanye West? Next World Events presents The Darkest Lost Media. I wonder if there's gonna be any black people in here. Since we're just talking about dark. Or is my mind in the wrong, in the wrong headspace? Nineteen seventy-four WXL, uh, something in your eyes, A eighty-nine. Okay. Play VCR. Okay, someone dropped a basketball. Oh, I love bunnies, man. Nice. Oh, I love arrows even more. Hands. I love my hands. I don't really like TV that much. There's something about lost media that's so incredibly unsettling. Mm. The idea of a piece of recorded history being effectively lost to time, cementing even the most mundane footage, TV shows, and even video games into the realm of mystery. I used to think that, and then I remember slavery exists, and no one could record slavery, and they were beating them niggas and skinning them, and I was like, huh, you know what? Lost media isn't that bad when I really think about the other stuff. Hey, I'm live on Twitch every single Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Link is in the description. I better see you there. It seems that each and every day, new relics of decades past are being remembered, spreading okay. like wildfire to all the others who also I vaguely remember it too. A year ago, I brought you through five of the darkest pieces of lost media that I could find. However, it was but a drop in the ocean of what's actually out there. Okay. There are hundreds, thousands of disturbing pieces of forgotten media, all with their own stories, their own significance, and their own intricate details that cement them as some of the darkest in existence. Okay. Tonight, you and I are diving back in. This is I just wanna the darkest. Dive in. Yeah. Lost media. So chat, I need to know the darkest lost media. Is this the uh video that had like the the weird alien creatures things or is this something else? No, the one with the woman on the tab. Tape 001. 3 mile monster. Everyone knows monsters can't run that far. That's a tornado, it's not a monster. It's the 31st of May, 2013, uh -huh. and the town of El Reno, Oklahoma is silent. It's a Friday like any other, except for a small problem. Okay, turn it around. This would always terrify me when it would pop up on the TV, bro. Like, it would always strike my attention. It would just be some bad storm warning. Like, that's what it would be. It would be like potential flooding, you know, but in my area, it would never actually flood, but it would have me terrified. Tornado warning for southwestern Oklahoma County in central Oklahoma, southeastern Canadian County in central Oklahoma, until 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. As the early evening approaches, alerts ring in about a potential multiple vortex tornado that may touch down in the area. Don't know what that means. It's something meteorologists haven't seen before. It's unprecedented. It's different. 
At 6.03 p.m., an EF-3 monster touches down around 8 Damn. miles southeast of El Reno, Oklahoma. That Pegasus? Rapidly, it swells in size, becoming more violent by the minute. It mostly remains over open fields, a good thing for the neighboring towns and cities. That cloud looked terrifying, bro. The sky looked like they just summoned Shinra at my fault. However, for those with a passion for chasing supercells like this, the outcome was far more disastrous. Oh, Lord. So four vortexes, that mean like four separate tornadoes uh, spawned out of one In the mid-2000s, a team of storm chasers going by the alias Twistex was formed under the Discovery Channel, headed by a man named Tim Samaras. It involved a group of 10 scientists with the goal of chasing and documenting the dynamics of various superstorms, utilizing numerous vehicles outfitted with weather probes. They didn't even go for normal storms. Them niggas went for superstorms. What? If you're a fan of the show Storm Chasers, then you've likely seen them in action as they were heavily involved in seasons three through five around the turn of the decade. On the night of the El Reno tornado, Tim Samaras, along with two other members, a videographer named Paul Samaras and a meteorologist named Carl Young were dispatched in one of the crew's Chevrolet Cobalts with the goal of deploying a weather drone in hopes of capturing atmospheric and seismic data. Okay. Ironically, being considered one of the safest storm chasers in the industry, Samaras was up for the task. And so, he and his crew decided to pursue the El Reno tornado, unaware of just how volatile it would soon become. I've never seen like a tornado in real life, so it's like the, the cloud, like I don't look up tornadoes, period. So all these clouds forming down for a tornado is crazy to me, like how close they are to the ground. I'm, keep, I'm gonna keep going. That's a crazy. That's the. That's huge. Cloud metal eyes. Multiple vortex. Why are we getting closer? Is that another tornado landed, bro? I think they're I think I was right. The four vortexes is basically a big storm with four separate tornadoes landing. Who thought this was a good idea? As the minutes pass, the vortex rapidly changes direction. It ramps up speed and it grows to a size never before seen. At its widest, it attains a diameter of 2.6 miles, cementing it as the single largest tornado by surface area. Oh. 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 Ever recorded. Re Who put out the tape measure? How do they know? Regardless, the Twistex team approaches it with their plan of deploying that weather drone before getting out of there as fast as possible. They begin their drive towards a highway in hopes of heading south towards its direction. However, to their surprise- So you're telling me all of this cloud is the storm? Tornado rapidly- What are we watching? The Dark is Lost Media, volume two. Unexpectedly, turn straight towards them. In the following minutes, they do everything they can to turn around, to get away from this beast of nature. However, before they know it, the storm overtakes them, leaving the three men helpless inside. Am I to assume what happened? As the cars picked up, Carl and Paul are ejected from the vehicle, while Tim remains trapped inside. And with nowhere to turn during this entire ordeal, all three of them tragically lose their lives. All right. 
RFD has wrapped 360 degrees around it. While others ran away, An amazing sight. Tim Samaras ran towards. It's this total amazing sight. I have never, I have never heard anyone refer to as a natural disaster as an amazing sight. Imagine a huge typhoon coming straight for your, straight for your town, and you have that one nigga like, wow, that's one big wave. That's an amazing sight right there. Really unbelievable what's happened because it should never have happened to Tim. Long time friend. Two days later and half a mile away, the bodies of Paul and Carl are found, and not far from them, their vehicle no. with Tim still inside. After a search, authorities find their belongings spread throughout a nearby creek bed, one of which being a camera belonging to Carl. Remarkably, it was still in working condition, and recorded onto it were the final moments of everyone in that How vehicle. How the fuck did that happen? To this day, only a very select handful of people have been given access to this video, one of which being the crew's close friend named Gabe Garfield. Since the incident, he's gone on record to state that while viewing it, he could hear Carl describe how, quote, eerily calm the air became around them in the moments prior to their death. Immediately after, Tim Samaras retorts, actually, I think we're in a bad spot. Before his final words, were going to die Jesus Christ. over and over through their radio. As far as it's known, this footage has never been released publicly, nor are there any plans to. Interestingly though, on YouTube, we're able to find a second-hand view of the TwistX team in the moments before the incident. Though, as they continue down their path, they're unknowingly heading right into this three-mile monster. Right. Like, where does it, where does it spawn at? Like, when does it touch down? Take a right. Yeah. Right on 81. I don't get it. Where? Oh, that's them? The vehicle heading down Ruta Road contains Twister team in the moments before the incident. In the following clips, you'll realize how treacherous the path ahead of them was and what they saw in the moments before their tragedy. I'm curious how much they got paid for all this now. I've never had anybody tell me to go slow before. <laughs> <laughs> totally missed the shot. <laughs> what? I'm not seeing it. Tell, tell him if he wants to come up and take the lead. Do you want to take the lead? you're viewing right now in the is the left edge of the tornado okay while randy and co made the decision to turn around after this photo others like twister was already hundreds of yards ahead of them so why couldn't they turn around i'm confused or did they try to turn around but it was already too late Hold up, chat. Let me ban somebody. Y'all didn't even get, y'all didn't get to see the message, but that nigga said, and I quote, "I hope she dies." To this day. This snippet is some of the last remaining public footage of their team, and it carries a haunting legacy of just how dangerous the profession of storm chasing. So they did turn around did right here, but by the time the they turned around right here, it was too late. Was caused by a phenomenon entirely unexpected. What began as just another day chasing just another storm had devolved into one of the most nightmarish scenarios one could ever find themselves in. And whether or not this footage ever sees the light of day, it's irrefutably tragic that multiple families were broken apart that night.
I think what creeps me out the most is that he just said, we're going to die. Like, I don't know why, but something about that just makes me, it just like, that right there gives me chills. By this when someone's facing death and they know they're going to die, that's, that's scary. Of nature. All right, B. I still need to know how much they getting paid for chasing storms. Cause you're gonna have to pay me something significant. You're like, hey, can you go to the can you go right in front of a super storm? No. Hello everyone, quick thing. Today's video is actually sponsored by the lovely people over at Incogni. Well, hundreds of thousands of retirees have had their personal information leaked after a massive data oh. breach. American Airlines and Southwest say they've notified more than 8,000 people who applied to become a pilot after a data breach to a third party vendor. House leaders say the impact of the health data breach impacting members of Congress and their staff could be more extensive than previously known. One of mm. the most important facets of the online experience today is privacy, which ironically seems to be escaping us more and more as companies shave increasingly intrusive bits of information from us. That's why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Incogni. In the modern day, your online data has become one of the most valuable in yes, out there. Yes, it's very I'm valuable. Online. Online. Very it's valuable. Exclude Nexbo for uh, Nexbo, uh, incogni.com slash Nexbo, 60% off. 60 Tape O-O-O-O. -O 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 my friend Frank. Now that's just that's just freaky on its own. Cause what nigga name is Frankie? And who be friends of Frankie? Especially Frankie from One Piece. We don't mess with him. Understand what I'm hearing. On the evening of March 9th, 2001, in the small village of Rottenburg, Germany, a man lies deceased in a bathtub. Hey, oh, oh, okay. Wow. He's been here for three hours and is lying in a pool of his own blood. His what? reproductive organs are gone. His throat is wide open. And needless to say, this scene is absolutely revolting why why did this happen to him did he sleep with the wrong woman what ne welcome to Nina Nina bakes Appealing to some of the most depraved types of people out there were a myriad of websites centering on very specific fetishes and interests. Oh, and the no. one that rose to mainstream prominence during the early 2000s was named none other than Cannibal Cafe. It appealed to... Oh, I am having thoughts about eating a girl alive. I would love well, cannibals. Wait, no, no, no. I would love. It appealed. Hold on. I am looking for a man who would love to love me in his belly. I have a blend. Arrange your feast. To. Well, uh, live. I would love to. A uh, jail puts me off. Is it a, just a fantasy? Getting the better of me, Cannibals. or those when I get meat, I have to get rid of some of the others and sometime be able to use all the meat rather than wasting some up. Let me know what you want to do with the extra meat. Freezing isn't always too legitimately desired to consume other human beings. And what festered here was a cesspool of pedophilia and ver I have little boy meat eight year old. Talk beaver fart. Am I a I'm a mother willing to give my eight-year-old up for dinner? 
What? That has, I don't I don't believe this for a second. I don't believe that for a second. That got to be cap. They're using at yahoo.com. No, no one use at. It's not even dot. It's dot. It's a, it's a comma. That's cap. This is a lie. Aurorophilia that went unchecked for years. Of course, the website staunchly claims that everything posted here is all fantasy. Who's fantasizing about eating dead children? What? But is it really? Or eating children a lot? Okay. In early 2001, a man going by nothing more than Frankie makes a numerous posts to the Cannibal covered. Cafe. Thank you, Cam. He's searching for, for what he calls a young slaughter boy and has a peculiar request. I'm searching for a young boy between 18 and 25 years old. If you have a normal body, I'll butcher you and eat your flesh. It was a disturbingly simple, to the point inquiry. And this post sat here, floating in the vast ocean that is the internet. For days. Only days? You're a funny guy, huh? <laughs> he, he has jokes! <laughs> he, he's a funny guy! <laughs> At least you said lag. No, that was fake. <laughs> he's, a, he, he's hilarious. As Frankie's post garnered slivers of attention, willing volunteers trickled in. When it really came down to it though, all of them ended up backing out. But there was one that didn't. A computer engineer named Bernd Brandis expresses to Frankie that he has a very specific fetish. What? It isn't for consuming others, but for the exact opposite. He wants to be consumed? He wants to be consumed. And he wants Frankie to be the one to do it to him. Over the next few And then he takes Frankie's body, cuts up Frankie, and then sells him. Few days, the two exchange contact information by email. And it's oh. here where Brandis learns that the name Frankie is nothing but an alias. Duh. This body man's real name is Armin Mivis, and he's ready to meet as soon as possible. Yo, like, what does this have to do with what you're talking about, bro? Hell no, nah, I'm looking this way. Oh my god. It's the night of March 9th, and Brandis is on his way to Armin's home. It's unclear what exactly is on his mind, and if he even knows what's coming. You probably listen to that right way, but I'm riding a road with 12 keyboards on my Brandis phone. opens with an interesting request. So if you were trying to pull me over, asking if I stole it, I bought it, I own it. I remember walking to school, catching the butt my. Oh, I love doors. I don't like doors where I can't see the other side. Oh, there's a door and a door. I love those type of doors. Cut the hot dog. He accidentally cut his finger because of the. I, I've done that before. Yep. Wants to have his reproductive appendage bit off and eaten. And so, complying, Mivis gives his wish a try, however, is unsuccessful due to its chewiness. Resultingly, he cuts it off and throws it in a frying pan with various marinades and seasonings. Wow. Okay. He tried. They couldn't do it, so he had to cut it off. Wow. Okay. I'm just holding my penis for real life. Don't mind me. However, after all of his effort, ends up burning it to the point where it's entirely inedible. 
You only had one chance and you fucked it up! Growing weak and losing blood, Mivus escorts him to his bathroom and over the next few minutes, places him inside the tub, feeds him a cocktail of painkillers and alcohol, slits his throat, and kisses him on the forehead as the life of Burn Brandis fades before his eyes. What, bro? Three hours, Brandis sits here as Mivus reads a Star Trek novel to pass the time. At least read me Harry Potter, Harry Potter. You weren't able to successfully eat my dingling like I wanted you to. At least read me a good story. And bafflingly, during this entire fiasco, not a single thing was done without anyone's consent. Not a single thing was done. So he wanted his throat slit, fed cocktails with pills. I'm staying out of it. I ain't got nothing to do with none of this. Oh, this is so lovely. Man, I love the outdoors, man. Sunshine, blue sky. Over the next few days, Armin Mivis dismembers Burn Brandis storing his remains in his deep freezer with nothing more than some frozen pizzas and a dead rat. Is that a live picture? Why? Why do we have this photo? This man has rats, pizza, and bodies in his deep freezer. Meanwhile, every single thing he's doing and has done to him is being filmed by a camera he's had on hand the entire time. All of it is documented, and all of it immortalized onto one single VHS tape. Is he the original Casey Neistat? Over the next 10 months, Armin consumes over 44 pounds of Burnt Brandis' flesh, taking out and cooking his body parts whenever he desired them. But he couldn't, he couldn't fresh, uh, cook the dingling, but he can cook the rest of it nice and well. Man! With this, he takes to the Cannibal Cafe to boast in explicit detail about his actions. However, it's here where Armin finally finds himself on the receiving end. Oh my fault. I have killed and disarmored, dismembered a man I met here. He offered himself to me. High, white, and with a pit. White? Huh? Please mail me your age, height. You mean width? Of trouble. All that By December of 2002, another member of the Cannibal Cafe reports numerous, explicitly detailed posts by Frankie to authorities, prompting a raid of his home. There, police okay. discover numerous body parts in a single four-hour videotape. There, police... Wait, is that whole thing his house? Because if it is, that... That shit is huge! discover numerous body parts in a single four-hour videotape depicting the murder apartment? and dismemberment mm. of Burnt Brandis. Probably because of apartment. their discovery, Armin Mivis was immediately apprehended. However, his charges were some that authorities had no specific laws on prosecuting. Burnt so Brandis, what does that mean? throughout this entire ordeal, had consent. was willing, which only brought considerable confusion and media attention to Yeah, he case. had consent the whole time. Nevertheless, Armin Mivis ended up with a conviction of murder and claimed that he'd done it out of sexual gratification. Today, he remains valid? incarcerated in Frankfurt, Germany and will, for the rest of his life, remain behind bars. Is that valid? Because if he had consent the whole time, I guess you can't kill even with consent. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that's why I'm not. That's why I'm not. It's still weird. It is definitely weird. You know what else is weird? You know, getting pooed on. But some people like getting pooed on. With consent, you can poo on people. So, I mean. Hmm.
Nobody underscore cares 982 cheered. X100. Waka, can you play my hero after this? I can play a game or two. Video camera recorder. The tape that Armin filmed during his night with Bern Brandis has yeah. never seen the light of day outside the courtroom during his trial. Mm. Considered to be too Good. gruesome to show to the general public, Good. the world is left to speculate on its contents. I'm not speculating nothing. The official story given during his testimony. I'm hearing this story and I'm throwing it right out my mind. I'm not thinking about this again a day in my life. To be honest, I don't quite know how to feel about this entire dilemma as Bern Brandis wanted all of this. He That's wasn't what I'm murdered saying. against his will, but he was still murdered. But is it murder? What's the definition of murdered? Unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. I guess it I guess technically it's unlawful. Mm, do I want some of your burger? Depends what uh what you have on it. Nevertheless, Armin Mivis oh, oh. is a depraved man, a man who created a situation that never should have happened. Mm. And because of his actions on that fateful night, one of the darkest lost media cases out there, needlessly, was born. The Cannibal Cafe form. That's a that's a that's a form I will never be seeing. <laughs> Tape 003. Tape spinning in circles. Tape spinning in circles. Tape spinning in circles. Man in the chair. I'm a man in a chair. Are they talking about me? A serial commercial. I cannot tell what I'm looking at. It's late at night, and 18 year old Kathleen Allen and her boyfriend Michael Carroll are spending time in a motel room in which they're living. Aww. On this day, nothing is awry, and to some, could even be considered painstakingly ordinary. At 10 p.m., Michael vaguely claims that he has to go do something and leaves after assuring her that he'd return in the morning. And so... What was he vaguely explaining? Because you're not about to leave the whole night and return in the morning and think it's A-OK. -okay. Not me, buddy. Kathleen goes to bed. And her night... comes to an end. Like, permanently? Like, what do you mean come to an end? Or she, he just said her night, though. He just said her night. He didn't say nothing else but her night. It's morning. And Michael Carroll is it's nowhere to be found. Yep. He went out and got himself Regardless, killed. Regardless, Kathleen doesn't think too much of it and goes about her life and work as usual. I guess this is the, this is the 80s, days though. days later, while at work, however... She receives them. You didn't see a man for three days and you were just chill? Is that how the 80s were? I'm telling y'all so much. It was so easy to do anything back in the day, bro. Too easy. I would have to feel like my life is in danger at all times. Hey, bro, what are you blabbering about? It's a man. And he knows where Michael's located. He claims that he was involved in a shooting and wouldn't be coming home. Shocked, Kathleen informs her boss that she needs to leave. And given the circumstances, she's given permission to do so. Okay. A few moments later, she's seen running out into the parking lot where a bearded man approaches her. The two reportedly engage in conversation before she ends up jumping in his car.
That's how easy it is. That's life with no cell phones, no internet, no text messages. That's how easy. Soon after, the man joins her in the vehicle and it speeds off, never to be seen again. Just hopping in strangers' cars. This is the last time that Kathleen Allen was ever seen in public. Again. Alive. Okay, or alive. Like, this is like hitchhiking. Like, who hitchhikes? Like, like, why was that ever a thing? Who thought, hey, I need to tell a stranger to stop in the middle of the road and take me home? Wait, Chad, that's a man in a chair. He's just like me. Okay. On October 29th, 1945, a man named Leonard Lake was 40. born in San Francisco, California. Oh, okay, 45. Being regarded a bright kid, his early years were relatively unsuspecting. When he turned six years old, however, his parents had separated to which Lake and his siblings would move in with their grandmother. Mm. Bizarrely, Lake began to exhibit disturbing habits. Oh, what are, what are these disturbing habits? I guarantee you, every habit he's gonna name is gonna that should have had him locked up in a in a somewhere, somewhere away from society. That's what he's about to do. Watch, watch, watch. On numerous occasions, he was caught photographing his sister's nude. Get rid of the child. Like, I told you, get rid of him. Like, in the for, in 40, in 1945, taking nude pictures, you know how loud that camera got to sound and how long that picture takes to process, too? He'd collect mice and dissolve them in chemicals. What'd I say? What did I say? Take him! And he'd extort his siblings into performing sexual acts. I called it. I called it. It was simple. Easy predictions. Like, <laughs> I didn't have to think about it. These are all obvious, obvious red flags that people just choose to ignore. All of which was condoned by his grandmother with not a single shred of effort to put a stop to it. Needless to say, Lake hailed from a broken home. Something that only catalyzed you don't his say. fascinations. However, because they were left unchecked, and often encouraged, Leonard Lake's life would only spiral further and further as time began to overtake him. Grandmother saw her grandson take pictures of his sisters naked, watch them do sexual favor favors, dissolve mice in chemicals, and I think they said at the age of six. Explosion, duh. I was so close. By the turn of the 80s and throughout adulthood, Leonard Lake became heavily invested in survivalism, a movement focused on preparing for severe emergencies. Okay. Notably, Lake had an undying fear of a nuclear holocaust and on numerous occasions, attempted to build safety bunkers at his residences. To be fair, this was during World War what, II, I think? Or around such time, so I don't blame to him. To varying success. In 1981, 
he put out an advertisement for a survivalist partner in a war game magazine in hopes of meeting someone to live with him for honestly god knows why the reason this is important is because this single page this one advertisement had led Lake to meet one of the most vile people in existence, exacerbating Lake's pre-existing morbid fantasies and Ooh. leading to his status as one of the most disgusting and disturbing monsters ever to exist. He met Hitler? The man's name was Charles Ng, a native of Hong Kong and a convict who was in and out of prison. Charles Ning was born in Hong Kong, the youngest of three sisters, as a child, and Ning was harshly disciplined and abused by his father as a teenager. He was described as a troubled loner and was expelled from several schools. After his arrest for shoplifting at age 15, he went at his father's insistence to Bethlehem Grammar School, boarding school, and okay. prison. Almost immediately, the pair hit it off, collaborating in numerous crimes like firearm theft that eventually led to their arrest and a Damn, brief stint in Bonnie prison. and Clyde for real. After their release, the two settled down in a wooded town named Wilseyville, and it was here where Lake enlisted the help of various residents to build yet another bunker right they, next they, to his they cabin. They gotta be gay. Inside, he'd begin stockpiling illegal weapons. However, alongside them was something that didn't exactly belong. It was equipment to record video. It was equipment. I have equipment right now. Like what? Hold on, this is not the man in the chair vid. Good evening. It's a Sunday in October. 22nd, 23rd, something like that. Very close to my 38th birthday. Uh, okay. And I'm starting this tape without script or without any real organization of what I want to say. Okay. This tape, what you're hearing now, is going to be the lead-in of the various phases of construction of a building, which hopefully will be the first of a series of underground buildings. Okay, so the this is the guy who's trying to build the uh, survivor thing. Building, Isn't that today? The whole justification for its expense and its effort will be a hidden portion of it, a secret room, if we can call it that, that will house a cell, a jail cell, if you will. Man, you need to get your money up. And the purpose of that cell and the main purpose, hence, of the building. You look like he's talking like he's in therapy. The imprisonment of a young lady what the fuck are we talking about? What happened to survivalism? What? Oh, what? What are you? Who probably at this moment is unknown to me. What? What I want is an off the shelf sex partner. Who wants a sex slave? That, that's straight up what he, he wants a sex slave. Oh, wait, this is the video that's the man in the chair. Oh, my fault. I thought it was a different one. I want to be able to use a woman whenever and however I want. Yo, this is and Discord mod? I'm tired or satiated or bored so, or not interested. Average, average Twitter user? I simply want to put her away, lock her up in a little room. Jesus get Christ. Her out of my sight out of my life. The advantages of such a situation are of course obvious. And Why is he talking to us about this? Like 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 we his homie or something. Nigga, we don't know you. I would never befriend anyone with such a big bald spot. So why are you talking to me about this? <laughs> and even beyond sexual, such a woman totally enslaved well, he said it. Um, would be useful for the mundane chores that I have to do, but I'm not particularly interested in doing. Clean house, washing dishes, etc. Average Twitter user, um, bro. This is ridiculous. Slave. There's no way around it. 
primarily a sexual story, but I don't watch them. I mean, I did say that I, I for Monday, February 15th. Hi, I'm Kyle Kraska. Hi, it's Kyle. Call the creepiest crime scene in America, a remote cabin where cops say some of the most gruesome serial killings in California history took place. Well, now Ed Miller's giving you an exclusive and very disturbing look inside this house of horrors. First, they were kidnapped, then robbed, raped and killed. 12 innocent victims, three women, seven men, two babies. I guess he said, fuck, he said, you know what? I can do more than just a young lady. Where's the men? The real reason for his bunker wasn't solely for survivalism. That was merely a piece of it. You see, Lake and Ng had this morbid obsession with capturing. Lake claimed that he needed them to serve him after the impending nuclear holocaust and frequently went on record to demean the existence of women entirely. Is Lake Nang the guy who was doing like all the stuff to the animals and whatnot and with the weird grandfather? Cause I could have sworn they were two separate people. Now I'm, I'm, now I'm getting confused. And so for years, Lake and Ng would capture, torture, <laughs> inside this bunker all the while documenting it on his myriad of VHS cameras installed inside each room. The woman we saw at the beginning of this segment wasn't just someone random, because it was Kathleen Allen. The woman who Who's left that? her job because of the news of her boyfriend's death. The woman who entered the car of a stranger and was never seen again. The woman who fell right into the grasp of Leonard Blake. And Leonard Lake is the one that did the thing to his sister and grandma, uh, his sister and what you call it in the mice. And then Leonard Lake passed it on to to King. I forgot the little the, the the woman thing even happened, bro. Jesus. While the pair's main target were women, they wouldn't hold back on abducting their relatives. Often, the pair would coerce men into coming out to their bunker in hopes of work before they'd rob them, strangle them and steal their identities. Thereafter, wow. they'd manipulate their families into coming to their property, much like they did with Kathleen, to which they'd lock them up in Lake's dungeon and leave them with an ultimatum. They can either serve Lake and Ng unapologetically, obeying their every command with- Y'all see how the toilet paper is on the inside and not the outside? Bro, these niggas are sickos! They can either serve Lake and Ng unapologetically, obeying their every command without hesitance, or they could be killed. No matter which option they chose, though, the outcome was all the same. Their lives would be brutally torn from them, with not a single soul around to help. How long does, did this last? Man really sat in front of a camera talking to nobody but himself and was like, yeah, I want a slave. I don't know what type of woman I'm going to have as a slave, but I'm definitely going to get one. Yeah. Survivalism and things of that nature. Yeah. In June of 1985, Police were called to a hardware store after Charles Ng was caught trying to shoplift a vice. Mm. After catching wind of the situation, Lake rushed there himself in hopes of paying for it. However, when police asked for an ID, he handed over one that looked nothing like him. It was the license for Robin Stapley. That's what I was going to say. How are you stealing ID identification when you don't look like the ID? A man who turned up missing just a few weeks prior. Following this, both Ink and Lake were arrested. However, just four days later, and while in custody, Leonard Lake would swallow cyanide pills, effectively ending his own life. Man! They caught Upon caught searching so Lake's easily. property, authorities discovered multiple vehicles belonging to their numerous victims, along with a makeshift burial site near their compound. What does that mean? Inside of it, they unearthed 40 pounds of crushed human bone fragments coming from what they believed to be the remains of at least 11 bodies. Jesus. Inside the bunker, they find a treasure map leading to two buckets containing various IDs and personal belongings. 
treasure map? And a myriad of VHS tapes depicting the torture and murder of their victims. To say that their discovery was grim is a criminal understatement, as the breadth of their crimes simply cannot be summarized in writing. The scene? Surreal. And the content on those VHS tapes? Indescribably worse. Today, Charles Ng is still alive, serving his life sentence in the San Quentin State Prison. Bro. Y'all should have been able to tell something was wrong with these dudes, bro. The man soaked his rats in, so rats in chemicals and burnt them alive. He took pictures of his nude sisters and their grandma let him. There were so many red flags. Given his court verdict being 12 counts of first degree murder, it's Damn. undeniable that this man will never again see the light of day. The crimes that he and Leonard Lake committed are some of the worst in history, and the fact that they videotaped it adds that extra layer of repulsion. To this day, the tapes filmed by Charles Ng and Leonard Lake are sealed away, with Good. no plans to ever be released. Not trying to see them. However, considering the content presumed to be on them, it's safe to say that some things are better off lost. I agree. What is going on? Tragedy. And definitely. Why do you pause your sentences like that? He's like, I'm gonna finish my sentence. Eventually, like, come on, bro. I'll get him myself if he escapes. <laughs> Tape four. Where are you? Now that's creepy too, bro. Where are you? And I'm. I was about 15. They used to stay up late in my room listening to the radio on a boombox with an integrated tape recorder. Oh, okay. I came across this. I don't think this was the beginning of the podcast. I caught a lot of it. Okay. Right at the end, an announcer says that the station I was tuned to was WKCR 89.9 New York. Damn, not 102 Jams? You never ran into music? Like, I'm confused. Where are you? Hello? My headphones working? What is that? Doesn't sound like music to my ears. Pokemon! See, I knew there was nothing could possibly go wrong. YouTube.com slash what? Slash what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait. All right, I'll spit on it. Yeah. Yeah. The creepy pasta. A relic of a bygone era in internet history. Yes, yeah, Lavender Town. The induction for many of us to online horror. Yeah. Suicide Mouse. Ben Drown, oh, I saw Slenderman, the and Sad Satan are among some of the most notorious online Sad horror stories Satan. in existence. However, to this day, one refuses to die. The fuck is this? It's called doing Jeff here? the Killer, and by this point, he needs no introduction. The story today hasn't exactly aged very well. And to be honest, it kind of sounds like a Joker fan fiction, and it isn't very scary. Okay, but I, that's I don't, okay. I don't recall the sis exactly story for our time. Jeff the Killer. 
Um, and uh, protagonist, I mean, antagonist, a remake. Creepy now, the door Jeff door. the Killer is certainly a tale that's past its time, yet it yeah. stands as somewhat of a cornerstone of online history. I don't Contrary know nothing to about all it. the effort put into the story, however, it's safe to say that the uncanniness of the image accompanying it was the major catalyst for its popularity online. I've seen the like the photo, like I know the Jeff the Killer, I know nothing the about image it though. Like wildfire. Though what most were unaware of was that it had coincidentally found itself caught in a web of both controversy and enduring mystery. And it was all based around one simple question. Where are you? Scooby Dooby Doo. Who took this photo? Okay. Is it not a selfie? It kind of looks like a selfie to me. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Does it end? Who created Jeff the Killer? Obviously, it was my man, man, Tupac. <laughs> you can see him in the background. Uh, California loves the party. <laughs> huh? Who is that nigga, Jeff? I'll put a knife to his neck. I'll make sure I stab him until he has no final breaths. Uh, the story as we know it was written by an author on the creepypasta wiki named Gamefield2000. Okay. In which its earliest known date of publication is November 21st of 2011. Curiously though, an online user going by the persona Sesswar had come forth shortly after its online explosion. His name is Jeff. In reality, they are Jeff's creator. Mm. It's a bold claim, yet this should be relatively easy to prove. Facts. Everyone say they're Jeff. They're, they, they're somebody though. A video was shared to a YouTube channel called Killer Jeff, an alias that Sesswar claims ownership of. The video is more or less a slideshow and drops bits of Jeff the Killer lore over pictures of various characters from his story. Okay. Interestingly, this upload was accompanied by a story on Newgrounds, where the same user Newgrounds. August tenth of oh, that same year. Oh man. The story of old Jeffy. He enjoys horror, such as ghost stories or slasher films. Have you ever met him in person? This man is what other people call bizarre. He's like a Bloody Mary game. Huh? Except he must perform it in the closet, turn off all the lights, and sit down cross-legged while repeating this saying three times while- Okay, so first off, what you have to do is become homosexual. So I obviously- I already can't summon Jeff if I wanted to, right? So this is a LGBT killer. Talk about targeting, bro. Turning your head back and forth. He's Would y'all ever do like y'all? Did y'all ever do the Bloody Mary thing or any like trying to summon demons, or were y'all not cock, cock enough for that? Cause I I was never cock enough for that, bro. I wouldn't dare. Here with me. After the saying, close your eyes and call out the name Jeff. He'll appear by putting his face right up to you and proceed to yell and try to chant harm at you. Jesus. To make him stop is to stand there and compliment him, and not doing so will result in a nightmarish field trip. Okay, so there we have it. Sesswar is the creator of Jeff the Killer, as they bear proof of the earliest rendition of utilizing both his name and image. Okay. With this in mind, surely they should have that picture unedited, right? It's not edited though. That's real life. That's a real person. In December of 2015, fellow creator Scare Theater got in contact with Sesswar. Okay. He asked them a plethora of questions like, what inspired you? Why do you call him Jeff? And did you ever expect him to become so well known? All granting thought provoking insight into the creator of this online behemoth. Interestingly though, in one of them, Scare Theater presses Sesswar about the origins of the Jeff image. Oh, okay. I thought he was pulling another trick on me. Nope, my headphones just disconnected. That's why I need another computer, bro. My 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 stuff my stuff is starting to fuck up. So I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to upgrade the computer shit. I'm getting a 4090. Them. 
scare theater press accessoire about the origins of the Jeff image, to which they respond, stating, The picture was made using a white latex mask and some big plastic eyes with red rubber substance that simulated blinking. Okay. There was also a black ring around the eyes that were on, covering the exposed red eyelid. All right. After it was made, two or three photos were taken and posted, and the rest is history. Well, just like that, mystery solved. Sessoir crafted something that scared millions online and did it with none other than a latex mask and some fake eyes. Hey, you know, it scared other millions of other people, you know what I'm saying? Me personally, I looked that nigga straight in his face and sock it. Ooh, ooh, Jeff ain't got nothing on me. Jeff ain't got nothing on me. Jeff, have you ever seen this? Please leave me alone, bro. I don't want no problems. Huh? So, good on them. So where does the where are you come from? What what about the girl on the radio talking about I was 15 at the time? What is it like what significance does that play? Shortly I don't know after that Sessoir's language interview, a video was found on a YouTube channel called Dark Knight. It was uploaded on the 2nd of August 2007 and is titled NNN special broadcast okay purportedly it's based upon a japanese no, not legend surrounding oh, a scrolling list of names at around three in the morning when no one should be watching the list is said to be accompanied by horrific imagery and bizarre sounds before at the very end it states that these names are tomorrow's sacrifice what that's some robot it's chicken type bs 58 stuff if i've ever seen it but that notion isn't the reason we're here tonight. You see, at the very end of this video, Dark Knight sneaks in a small surprise, turning everything we thought we knew about Jeff the Killer on its head. Hold up, no, what? Okay. Y'all over here playing with me with these sound effects, bro. I'm not trying to hear none of this. That was 07, but the other creator said it was 08. Yup. Yup. It was here when it was realized that Sessoir was a fraud. A liar. He lied when everyone was taking his word at face value. He just wanted some clout. Not like, duh, that, he lied. Jeff the Killer's image likely didn't even originate from our side of the world, as evidence from an unsuspecting website began to surface in the coming months. Mmm. Jeff the Killer's Asian. What's Jeff in uh in uh Japanese? What's Jeff in Chinese? What's Jeff in Korean? Where did this image come from? And what did the original version even look like? If Jeff the Killer were hidden within this video, unknown to the entire world, just sitting here since 2007, waiting to be found, there was bound to be more about him out there. By 2018, Investigators made their way to a now defunct Japanese message board named Pia.cc. It's your run of the mill website containing blog posts and online discussion. However, way 18 back plus in 2005, me in the mirror, okay. Hidden away inside an otherwise innocuous and highly obscure Shit. post. Again, was him. This photo, photo was uploaded on the 15th of November by a user named Omega Bolt. However, to this day, contact with them has been absolutely non-existent. Oh. They have seemingly fallen off the face of the earth, effectively becoming just as obscure as Jeff's origin. I mean, shit, that was in 05. As you said 2018, a lot can happen in 13 years. I don't know. I don't know. Itself. Aside from that, though, this discovery was far from a dead end as once this photo was run through an EXIF data analyzer, it was found that its file name is Pretty Face. Where? <laughs> Writer name, Adobe Photoshop. Like they're using Photoshop. What does this have to do with the little girl on the radio earlier? Interesting, considering that just a few weeks later, they found him again. How? Ew. 
That's a fake, that's a fake Jeff, bro. For the very first time, an alternate, less modified version of Jeff the Killer was uncovered, named White Powder 2. That's cap. It was uploaded by a user named Mr. Mulholland, and in their version, were able to make up minute details that were otherwise shrouded by Photoshop. The mouth is no longer distorted. The facial accents, gone. And the previously foreboding eyes are replaced by an alternative. <laughs> Google, I mean, the guy Contrary did get it right. Unbreakable, though, Mr. Mulholland was actually tracked down and contacted via Twitter. There, they claimed that they saw the image before it was edited and believed that it, to their memory, came from an online video of an Asian woman inside her home. I call Cap. Ain't no way you remember that. That is 05. Why would you remember or care for anything like that? Reportedly, and he it did say he edited he did edit the uh, on Photoshop on it what you call it it did say that so it's just fake her face was extremely pale and lightly edited screen caps of her were passed around Japanese message boards as surprise images in the mid 2000s they further state that they don't have the original image believes that it no longer exists on the internet and speculates that it may come from a TV show named Honto Niata no Roy no video. Uh. Since this revelation, every episode made from 1999 to 2005 have been thoroughly searched, yet a match has never been found. Tragic. Okay, so what does it have to do with the little girl at the beginning? I'm, I'm feeling just like you. But what is there is one more, to this day, regarded as the oldest sighting of Jeff the Killer. On the homepage of a website named file.n1e.jp, <laughs> that's just a crazy profile picture. Among images of puppies and waifus, was version one, captured on July 24th of 2005. Mm. The only clues that accompanied this are the caption "Fear of a Summer Night," and once clicked, a descriptor claims this photo is quote a celebrity before plastic surgery. Okay. Aside from Category this, scare? no further context is given. To be honest, we so Jeff's a woman. Day because it's actually Jeff. Began, uh. There have been hundreds of sightings of Jeff the Killer online, all predating Cesar's original story. Over the years, there have been quite a handful of original image contenders that have gained considerable traction. Jeff of the Killer. The widespread hoax involving a woman who doesn't even exist. <laughs> It's safe to say that this surge has had its fair share of controversy, yet that hasn't slowed the decade-long resilience of those trying to investigate this. This is one of the longest-running internet mysteries of all time, and if I'm being honest, it may never find a resolution. Okay, so why are Other we talking of about Jeff it? Are discovered, yet they bear more edits than version one. Like I don't understand. Rumors circulate what about is the it being purpose? a photo in a set of three, yet no proof has ever surfaced, and almost daily. Those with too much free time are creating their own version of the original image and are touting it as the real thing. Sometimes the existence of an enduring mystery brings life enduring fascination. There's something hauntingly captivating about topics that seem unsolvable. So does this especially have, in the modern day. Does this have nothing to do with the 50 In a perfect world? world, the existence of the internet should mark the death of all things mysterious, as at a moment's notice, Every action taking place on this earth theoretically should have some sort of readily accessible answer. Okay. I'm glad that's not the case though, as Jeff the Killer has given the modern internet just that small hint of mystifying intrigue. White powder. It's based around a question so simple. It's quite literally the product of someone who knows someone who knows someone who took this photo, yet they, to this day, have never come forward. Cause it's white Maybe powder. It's a language barrier. Perhaps they've passed away. Maybe they live under a rock and have absolutely no idea that the simple picture they took on a random day pre-2005 is now subject to one of the largest internet hunts in recent history. What if that's their KKK Regardless application? Regardless of where this person is, Jeff the Killer in some capacity has stood the test of time and whether his identity is ever actually found, he will forever remain Please skip. Stop whining. We're almost conversation. done. Always regarded an enigmatic paradox effectively immortalized as one of the most recognizable yet completely unknown internet urban legends ever.
to exist. Where are you, Jeff? Where are you? I'm right here, always watching. But Jeff, Jeff, I need you over here. I don't need to be over here, because I'm right here. I'm gonna eat your head. But Jeff! Tape 005, the final tape, chat. The woman in the, f oh, great. Plantation, slavery, love it. This is what I want to finish off on. You know Microsoft, why not use your connections? The people who made Hey, Microsoft. Reliable with Windows now do Tell my nigga Billy Gates. All right, we did this last time and we're going to do it again here. Before we begin this next segment, I'd like to state that this next entry may be nothing at all. I could okay. be reading way too much into it, but the following topic is something that's personally haunted me for years, even though it's relatively simple. It better not be no BS. With that being said, this section does involve heavily disturbing imagery. So if that type of thing bothers you, viewer discretion. This is better be no BS. Let us begin. Chat, chat, is y'all BS Raider going off? My BS alert is going off. Wee -woo, wee -woo, wee! A frontier that found mainstream popularity at the turn of the millennium. A seemingly endless repository of history culture and conversation okay throughout the years the rise of the internet has given the world an outlet for expression a vehicle for humor and so a little known phenomenon known as the meme oh memes born. nice this is not the best way to eat a cupcake i just found this out you take the bottom part put it on top you don't get messy it's okay. so much better this is this is <laughs> Yo, what what is happening right now? Is she just turned to Sandman? What is going on right here? I'm gonna dive into their cultural significance, as I'm pretty sure you're all aware of what they are. Uh huh. The reason I bring them up tonight, however is because there's one out there that has stood out to me ever since I first heard about it on Reddit two and a half years ago. Now, before we continue, I want you to know that I've gone back and forth on covering this topic for years now. I've scripted this out, then scrapped it, then threw it in an iceberg I wrote, then trashed it. <laughs> I don't quite know where or how this fits on my channel, if you catch my drift. Okay. Black confidence, buddy? But it is creepy. I'm not going to get creeped out at all. One thing about me is I don't really October get scared. October 26th of 2020. Oh, recently. I believe this popular meme is an image from a snuff film. Hopefully you guys can prove me wrong. Hello there. Please let me know if this isn't the right place to post this. I've seen this meme being posted around for quite a long time usually with drinking related titles, as if the person lying on the grass is just blacked out drunk. Okay. Now, I'll never forget a video I saw on the deep web about eight years ago that showed two Russian guys messing around with the body of a woman, inserting a kitchen knife on her face and other terribly atrocious things. Why are you on the deep web in the first place? Whenever I see this meme, I think of this video and after taking a good look at the picture, I believe it can actually be a frame from it. The video takes place in a very similar setting the concrete well and the grass surrounding it. However, it could very well be that I'm misremembering it. Yeah, you're misremembering it. The questions it. I'm left with are, does anybody know about the origin of this photo? Is there anyone here who's familiar with the clip I've talked about? And if so, could this be from it? We don't go on the dark web, buddy. I don't remember well enough to be sure whether it's the same or not. I know I could just check it we out We like myself, the normal internet, not the dark one. We're searching for this kind of content again. I hope some of you guys can help with this. If it's dark, it's not right. Thank you. Period. Shh. 
shout out to the days when you said you were at a sleepover, but you were actually dying in a field from alcohol poisoning. What? This is the image. Never seen that a day in my life. I don't know nothing about that. We stay on the white web, the, the, the clear web over here. The white web, we don't stay on the dark one. A year ago, I discussed a similar mystery in a segment about Corey Feldman. And within the very same day my video went public, you guys were able to dig up its source. Because of this, I've decided to quit sitting on this one because this one photo has legitimately bothered me from the first moment I saw it. Okay. As we can see, we have what appears to be a person with white hair lying face down in a field of tall grass. They're draped in a large long sleeve shirt, uh -huh. dark blue jeans and boots. Yeah. Their body lies in a fashion that appears limp. And this entire image- Hold up, is that- Am I the only one who sees an animal right here? And I see, I see a, a little bear cub right here. I see an animal like a bear right here. You see that black eye right here, nostril, white fur. Hold up, or is it a wolf? Is this a rat tail? What is going on with this image? Image is engulfed in VHS degradation, implying that it came from some sort of old video. Now this is like a raccoon. To left, appears to be a concrete pad, and on top of it seems to be some sort of metallic object. It's a bear again. Aside from this, There's so much going there are on. no further identifying features in this photo. Is that concrete slab? No age range. Nope, those no are location, animals. No reference for height. Not even confirmation that this person is alive. At all. I mean, yeah, it is a singular picture. Reverse searching this meme brings up a whole lot of nothing, besides the fact that the earliest archived version of it came from a Blogspot post in 2016. It also seemed to be copied from another source, as compression artifacts were present, even on this image from nearly a decade ago. All right. Reverse searching the photo itself gives us more of the same. However, upon pivoting to Yandex, what I did discover that? an interesting trend. What are these websites you be on? Yandex? I know Spandex. I be wearing them all the time. I be letting my balls so. Let my sack be loose. What the fuck? Is this a trend? Like, what's going on? Curiously, there's a myriad of images of people lying in a field, appearing limp, much like the photo we're investigating. Why? Then they're all labeled with captions that appear mostly innocent. Russian youth having fun. This guy's tired of the sun. Hero risks his life to save a dog. What have you. But where things really get funky is when we look at this one, in which we can see a body lying in a very similar manner as ours. Yeah. They're sleeping in grass. Oh, we're seeing the live video. Huh? What is the little nigga saying? There's no further context to this video what the aside fuck was from that? its title, which translates to Dying Swan, and there are no what? other relevant videos on their channel. What? Now, the reason I bring this up is because, out of context, this image looks just as haunting as ours. However, it appears to be nothing more than a screen grab from an old, obscure prank. Okay. I'm not saying that this image is something just as lighthearted. However, the possibility is there. So, where is this image from? And what's its context? How did this end up in a meme throughout the mid 2010s? It looks like more mid Louisiana, it? to be honest. These are the questions that have bothered me for nearly three years now. And this is where I need your help to figure this out. Okay, chat. We have to go de is deep the dive and figure this out. In the field. You know me. I can figure this out easily. I'm used to looking up stuff like this. Post this on YouTube by tomorrow. Tonight, 
You and I dove into five more of the darkest pieces of lost media I could find. We did. As we can say, there's no shortage of obscure, disturbing content like this. There's and not. I hope you all enjoyed this trip down the dark side of the internet. It, it was it was a trip. It was a trip. Some were enjoyable, some were questionable. <laughs>